Hi everybody, my name is Liz. I'm from the Star Rock Shop in Kirimuir and I've been asked to do a recipe for Fair Trade Fortnight using some of the ingredients. Now, one of the main ingredients that's listed for Fair Trade Fortnight is sugar. And sugar first came to Scotland about 300 years ago. And the reason this shop exists is because that influx of sugar gave new opportunities for us to cook new things. Uh, we have our own rock recipe here. The shop itself was started in 1833 because of that rock recipe. And I'm going to show you something new today. It's not one we have in the shop every day, but what we do in the shop takes about an hour and a half, two hours to cook each time. So this time we're going to do something nice and quick that everybody can adapt and do at home. I've deliberately got a small pan instead of one of our usual huge ones, and I'll talk you through everything as we go. First thing I need to do is get myself ready to cook, which I do every time I cook in the kitchen. And I've got long hair, I'm gonna tie my hair back, I'm gonna put my apron on, protects my clothes, but also protects me, and also wash my hands automatically, the first thing I ever do in the kitchen. So that's me all ready to go. I'm gonna be recording this on my own, so you won't see much of me, but you're gonna see my hands now, and I'm gonna show you my little setup and talk you through the whole of the recipe. So this is me set up in the kitchen. It's a small space, but it allows me to be able to video and show you and demonstrate as safely as possible, first off. So this recipe is for anybody, adults, teenagers, children with supervision. It does include hot sugars, and therefore I would caution everybody, watch what you're doing, be concentrate and be careful. And one of the big things about getting it right is to actually get ready before you start. So I have laid out here all my ingredients. And the first thing I did was print off my recipe. This recipe will come to you and is available. So I'm going to go through, I'm reading through my recipe, making sure I understand all the steps so nothing comes as a surprise. Because making caramel, which is what we're about to do, does mean that you're actually going to do things quite quickly. It's necessary to work through quite quickly. So I've read through my recipe and then I've gone to my ingredients and I've put them all out ready. So the first thing at the top of my list is butter. I have butter. Because I've read through my recipe, I know it's going to have to go into a microwavable bowl and I've cut it up as well because I want to melt it. So if I've cut it up, it'll melt faster. The next thing I have is double cream. I've measured my double cream in this jug then rinse the jug and measure something else. Put it in a cup, all ready to go. Don't have to worry about the time measure, measuring it out. I've also got my golden syrup ready. I've got my granulated syrup, my granulated sugar all weighed out. And I also have my water, which you might think I could do the water as I go along. But for speed, I know everything is ready and at hand. I've got my wooden spoon for stirring my pan. I always use wooden spoons, sometimes plastics, because I want a really fine, good scrape around the edges. But a wooden spoon generally is my go-to. It is personal choice because modern plastic silicon spoons do the job just as well. Also, when I measured my water, it does say tablespoon. So this is my tablespoon. Quite simply, a few tablespoons of cold water, three are in there. I've also got my sugar thermometer. My sugar thermometer, I have one standardly. I need to use this every day I cook rock. I don't use it for my tablet anymore. That goes off about the site. So sugar thermometer, it is quite important. I'm not saying it's impossible to make this without it. And we will talk through colour and what you see to, as we go along and also how long it takes to cook to try and get around just in case you don't have a sugar thermometer. But really, for more accurate me measuring, when you come in to anything that's sweetly cooked, um, desserts, cakes, anything at all, a sugar thermometer is a good handy tool. So while I was waiting for my butter and cream to melt in the microwave, what I've done is I've also prepared my tin for when I've actually finished cooking, I very quickly need to pour straight into the tin. I don't have time to prepare my tin at that point. So as part of the preparation of getting your ingredients ready, you should also make sure you get right to the end of the recipe and check what you need to do when it comes to pouring and setting your caramel. I've got a small tin here. It's been buttered. You can use oil if you wish. I don't have oil in the kitchen here, so I use butter instead. And then I've put a small piece of grease tooth paper in the bottom and then I've oiled that as well. So my tin is even ready now. Let's get 
started. I've put, got my pan on my stove and I'm going to put my golden syrup into the pan. So a heavy based pan is what's needed um, so that essentially we call them a heavy based pans because they will take the temperatures that we want them to go up to. My pans uh, for cooking the rock are probably about, um, I don't know, maybe maybe five, ten times bigger than this. Shall I show you one? This is one of my rock pans. So you can see, I did do the caramel at first in one of these pans, but it's not necessarily gonna work for you at home. So we just simply make it in a pan that I brought in from home. So I've got my hob, doesn't have numbers on it. It's a gas hob, so it's very powerful. And so I turn it down to a medium heat. I've gone past the main flame and I've gone down to just a slightly lower heat. There we go. So now that that's come in, because I used my spoon, metal spoon to get rid of all the golden syrup out of the bowl, I wanted to keep it in and melt it and make sure I didn't waste any. So I can now transfer to my wooden spoon and get rid of that one. So what I'm gonna do with this, just turn this down, is I'm gonna gently bring this up to heat. So I've put my golden syrup in, I've put the three tablespoons of water in, and they're now quite happily mixed together well. Can look at that it's quite liquid so I'm now going to add my sugar but I'm going to add my sugar very slowly because I actually want the sugar in the center of the mix what I'm trying to avoid is the sugar crystallizing and going up the sides of the pan because essentially it's wasted it doesn't get included in the syrup very easily we will do a couple of things now to counteract that and get rid of a few bits on the side but really if you can aim very slowly and carefully because we're already quite hot with this to enter it into the center then that will help your recipe or do any harm but you'll just won't have as much okay so i am stirring this and i would like this so i'm trying to do it nice and gently so it doesn't go too high up the sides i'm over as i, as I said a medium low heat because you're going to bring it up to a temperature so how slowly you do that doesn't really affect the actual caramel itself it doesn't have to very quickly get to the boil so as I gently stir that we can see we're just changing color slightly and you'll be able to see it is going to start it gets a bit cloudy and then it start, once it starts to clear, it also is starting to boil and we're bringing it to the boil. So the boil is all the bubbles on the top. So what I'll do for a moment, I'm gonna bring it a bit nearer so that you can see a bit better what we're talking about. Now, I shouldn't tip it but I just want to make sure that you can see it properly. There we go. So as you're stirring, make sure you're happy with the steps you've gone through so far and make sure you're nice and safe and you can check what you're gonna do next. So what I'm doing now is I'm just bringing this to the boil. It's literally been a couple of minutes, that's all it takes. So as I bring this to the boil, I'm going to put the lid on. And as I said, we don't wanna lose these bits here. The lid will keep, keep all the heat inside. It pre creates a steam and a moisture inside. And that steam and moisture will make sure that all around the edges get quite warm, wet, and then it will run down any extra um, sugar, hopefully from the sides. And then we just need to be a bit more careful again. 
So I'm lucky, I've got a pan lid that's clear, I can see what's happening uh, inside, I can see that obviously the moisture is forming and it is running down the sides. But if you haven't got one, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna pop a lid on for about a minute or so, nothing more than that. So I've put my lid on, I'm quite happy. Take my lid off, move that to somewhere safe. And you can see that it's actually much clearer now that it's come to the boil. So this is where we're looking to alter our temperatures and bring it up to a certain temperature before we add anything else to the mix. So my sugar temperature, so the sugar thermometer has this little clip on the back that you can or can't use, it's entirely up to you. Often they will stand without it, but to be safe, you do have that there as well. And I'm just gonna stand it on there because I have the wall, fortunately, to help me as well. So my current temperature, I'm rising still because it's only just gone in, but it's about 210, 220. And we've got that light amber color. We're going to watch that now, slowly, just for the next few minutes. I'll time it as well to give a rough idea. And what I'm aiming for is to get up to a temperature of, two, of 320 degrees on my left-hand side, degrees Fahrenheit. And on the centigrade, if you only have a centigrade thermometer, is about 160. So it's still got quite a way to go. So this is where, for the next five or ten minutes, we're going to watch it boil. Our sugar mix has now been boiling away for five minutes and you can see quite quickly that it's starting to deepen in colour. So we've still got a little way to go, we're on 290 degrees which is 145-ish and uh, we've just got a little way to go to get up to 320. But while I'm doing this and waiting and watching that regularly Again, I check through my recipe to see if there's anything else I could be doing. So at the end of this, my pan will come off and I'm going to pour my syrup, caramel syrup, into my tray that I've already prepared. What happens to my pan? Well, the best way to deal with my pan is not to put it into cold water because it is going to be incredibly hot. But I put it in the sink and I put boiling water into the pan straight away. So it stops it from setting hard like a rock stuck all over your pan, very difficult to clean. I will then therefore have hot water ready. It might be that you need to boil the kettle and do it that way. I have um, deliberately have a very hot water geyser because of my rock cooking anyway. But I'm aware of what, where I'm going to go with the hot pan before it comes off. So we're just coming up now and we're at 320. So we're at 320, that's the point we want to be at. I can take out my sugar thermometer and I, ahead of time again, I'm ready because I have a cup of hot water. And I'm gonna add my sugar, my cream and butter mix. Got a dish on the side. Whoop. Get that ready. And I'm doing it really, really slowly because it pops. Look at that. Now I think what I'm going to do is probably turn it down a wee bit because I want to be in control. don't want it to control me and make me nervous because we are looking at hot boiling sugar. If for any reason it does spit, you do get caught, turn the gas off instantly and get to the sink. Get to the sink and have your hand under a cold running tap and just stay there. Any spits of any kind. Because this is hot sugar, this is above boiling point for normal water. Um, sugar has always had a much higher boiling point than water and therefore it does require extra care. So it's changing completely. You can see it gets thicker, it gets lighter because of the added colour. There we go. I'm putting in a little bit at a time. The first one that goes in should be a tiny amount. 
maybe an eighth, a sixth of the actual amount you've got in your bowl because it can spit so quickly. You do not want it to boil up. You don't want it to spit at you. You want to be nice and safe. And then as you go on, you can see the texture continues to change. It gets more and more like the kind of colour you think of caramel being. So there's me coming to the end of that. I've got my other spoon just on the side waiting. Scrape it all around and make sure I've got it all in. And then dispose of that. Quite simply, have your sink empty, have it ready, and you can just dispose of anything at all that's hot safely out of the way. Now, because I've added the cream and the butter, then it will bring the temperature back down and I don't need the temperature to come back down and then take it off. It's still got to boil to a degree. So I can put my thermometer back in and it's there. And what I'm looking for is it will instantly go straight up, but it won't go back up to 320. Um, it's not going to reach that amount. And actually, we don't really want it to go that high up anyway. What we're aiming for now we're going to look to go back up to 240 degrees, 150 degrees centigrade. So I'm currently sat at 190, but still climbing. And we're reaching up to 200. on 210 and we're still climbing so it was a gradual thing from here we've got another few minutes to go so I will deliberately time that as well and see how for how long it takes one of the biggest things to notice about when you're cooking sugar is color you're looking for the colors to change and everybody probably knows that there's that that deep brown, amber, copper colour that you get with caramels and that's what you're aiming for. And so you're looking for that colour and you think, right, that's nearly there. So I'll start to watch the temperature and I'll also watch the texture and the consistency because it's bubbling, you know, and caramel does bubble quite a lot. You then start to get what's known as creases in the top as well. So it's not easy to see, but there you have some creases that are forming. If you look here, the crease doesn't go away. And that's when you know to the caramel, the sugar is at a really high temperature. So it's coming up to temperature really well. We're not stirring it, we're just letting it bubble on its own. So we're at 220, we've gone past 220, so we've not got very far to go. So what I'm gonna do is get my my dish ready, I'm moving you back. I'm going to get my tray ready for me to pour my caramel safely. Now, depending on what kind of pan you've used, I've got a double handle pan here. You might have a single handle pan. Probably easier in a single handle pan because you're going to tip and pour, keep your hands well away from it. Again, I've got my cup ready with my boiling water. I can take my thermometer out instead of dripping hot caramel across the kitchen in any way. I've always had, I've constantly had a little tissue here just because I'm taking it in and out because I'm demonstrating for you. So I'll just take my spoon out and I've got space for put things down without panicking. That's the biggest part of this is you need to stay in control. So we're just coming up, we're at just approaching 2.30. So we've only got another 10 degrees to go and it will do that quite quickly. So I'm quite happy just to give it a stir now in anticipation that I'm going to take it off very quickly, very soon. And rather than having to stir it once it's got to temperature and it keeps cooking, I'm going to take it off very quickly. It smells good. Smells very good. That buttery, sugary, sweet taste. It's always good in the smell. I always say I'd like to be able to 
bottle the smells that come out of this kitchen. Just over 2.30. So that's us at 2.38 and it was seven minutes of cooking time to get to this temperature. It's very close now, it's just coming up to 2.40. And you can see, there again, let me show you a bit closer. Then we've got our, it's very, very bubbly. And the bubbles are holding. We've got big creases around here as well. There's a crease there you can see under the spoon. And that's all holding, that's the sugar uh, having melted, boiled and caramelised. And we're just about there. When we take this off, this was going to be, the intention is it's going to be a soft, chewy caramel. If we went higher, we went to about 245, it would get firmer. And again, slightly less. So if you don't have a thermometer, then it's just about remembering how it looks. Check the video, how does it look? And then you might get it slightly firmer, slightly softer. It's just... Um, that until you gauge it, if you've made it a few times, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. So that's me at 240. I'm going to safely take my thermometer out, dripping caramel as I say, and I'm going to pop, pop that in my water, turn off my ring, give it a stir so it's away from the edges, and then I'm just going to pour it into my bowl, dish, my tray that I'm using and do it in the centre. You don't need to move it around, it will move itself. There you go. Now I'm used to doing this so my spoon's still in there quite happily but if, as I say, if you have something on the side where you can safely put your spoon then you can... I'm left-handed, it might look a bit awkward, my apologies, but I'm just going to get these last few bits out of here as safely as I can. So that's all in my dish. You can see, nice and empty. Nice and safe with my pan over to the sink. Here is our caramel in its tray. That's going to start setting now and I'm going to leave it overnight but probably a minimum of four hours is what's needed if you were in a hurry. So you could make it in the morning, you could be eating it by mid-afternoon. Um, as it is, I like to leave it a little bit longer um, to make sure it's set well. So that's me done. That's the first demonstration I've done for a very long time so please forgive me probably talked too much and repeated myself and things like that. I'm very careful that I make sure I want everybody to be safe when they cook this so that it is accessible to everybody out there. And I hope you enjoy making and then enjoy eating. Thank you.